Brian Jacoby from IPR, the Institute of Production and Recording. Today we're talking about Pro Tools 11 and Avid's enhancements to the Bounce to Disk and Bounce to QuickTime features. Uh, the first enhancement that we're going to talk about is offline bounce, what a lot of people would refer to as faster than real-time bounce. So to access that, we're going to Bounce to Disk or Bounce to QuickTime in a standard way. And uh, all you have to do is click this checkbox down here that says offline. So real simple to access. When we do a bounce, you're actually going to see a uh, multiplier here that shows how much faster than real time it's actually bouncing to disk. So in this case, I've got a few background processes running, but a pretty uh, uh, simple application. But uh, it's bouncing to disk at 12x real time. If I wasn't screen capturing at the same time, I'd probably get a faster result. If I had a pretty complex session going on, more processing, I might actually get a slower result. A couple of things that you want to be aware of when you're doing an offline bounce. If your mix is dependent on any external hardware, so that means MIDI devices that might be coming back into an instrument track or an aux input, that means any hardware inserts any hardware devices, sends and returns that might be coming into an aux track, any synchronized devices, those obviously aren't going to be included in a faster than real-time bounce. Something else to be aware of is that any DSP-based plugins get converted to their native counterparts. The offline bounce happens entirely on the CPU. So if you have some older plugins, older TDM-based plugins that may not have an RTAS counterpart, then you're going to have a problem with that in your offline bounce. They won't be included. That's obviously not an issue with the new AAX plugins that are both DSP and native in a single plugin version. The speed of our offline bounce is going to be affected by a couple of things. Uh, I'm going to bring up the system usage window to show you those things. So first off is going to be our CPU usage. So the amount of CPU power that we have available for that native processing is going to have a big effect on how fast we're able to process audio and do this faster than real-time bounce. If we're using DSP-based processing and we're already kind of maxing out our CPU usage, uh, this is an area where we can have problems with an offline bounce. This is one of the occasions where an offline bounce can actually take longer than a real-time bounce. So in those situations, you may be better off going back to the traditional turn off the offline bounce and do your real-time bounce. Another situation where we can run into problems is with our disk usage. Uh, if we're already above 50% or maxing out our disk usage, we're not going to be able to pull a lot of extra speed on our offline bounce because we're just simply not able to pull the data from the disk any faster. If you're having a problem with the disk bandwidth, going to Setup, Playback Engine, and increasing the disk cache can actually help out in those situations. So that's something to consider as well. Uh, sometimes with some strange mixer configurations, we can get uh, situations where one or more of our cores are maxed out, but others aren't getting used very well. Uh, we can also end up with some situations with third-party plugins that will cause problems with offline bounce as well. So there will be some rare situations where offline bounce just isn't going to be the best option for us, and we want to turn that off and go back to the traditional real-time bounce. It's worth noting that offline bounce also works for our bounce to QuickTime feature. Another new feature in Pro Tools 11 is the ability to bounce multiple sources to multiple files at the same time. So this allows you to take stem mixes, for example. So you might want to take your drums, guitars, keyboard instruments, vocals as separate stems, as well as your complete final mix all at the same time, as opposed to doing multiple passes as we had to do in the past. So in order to do that, we're going to go back to our standard file, bounce to disk, and choose our first bounce source. We're going to choose our main, our built-in output as our first bounce source. And then we can simply click the plus button here, and we can select any of our buses. In this case, I don't have a lot of sources going on, 
but I'm just going to pick up this bus and pretend that it's also a submix as well. So we have additional sources coming out here that we're able to pick up and bounce all at the same time. Something you may notice as a new feature in the bounce window is the file name and directory section down here. This is especially important when we do multi-source bounces because Pro Tools is going to use whatever your named file name here as the root of those file names, but it's going to add some extra information so you're able to tell the difference between each stem that it bounces out. But rather than having an additional dialog pop up to ask us what we want to name our bounce and also where we want to place it, we're able to do that right here from the main window. You'll also notice that in Pro Tools 11, Pro Tools automatically creates a bounced files folder within our session directory, which is kind of nice so you never have to go hunting for your bounced files. I'm going to go ahead and do a bounce to disk here and we'll take a look at what those bounced files end up being named. Funny enough, that bounce actually ended up being a lot faster than our first one, probably a little less load on whatever's going on in the background. I'm going to go ahead and flip over to the finder, and I'm in my bounced files directory, and you'll notice that it's amended the file names with a underscore and a name of the particular output that it came from. Now, back in Pro Tools, if we reopen the bounce window, you'll notice there's another feature here called Add MP3. If we check that box, Pro Tools will output an MP3 file in addition to whatever our selected file type is here for each one of these selected sources. So it'll output a WAV file of this output along with an MP3 as well as a WAV file of this output along with an MP3. If we have any non-stereo or mono paths selected, so say a 5.1 or a 7.1 path, the add mp3 option will be disabled. It's also worth noting that if we use the share with option down here, SoundCloud, Gobbler, either of those sources, they're going to receive whatever is the file type selected here, not the additional mp3. So this is kind of a handy way if you want to be able to output your mix, and I'll put an MP3 to upload to your client right away. If we go ahead and click that and hit bounce, we'll be presented here with the MP3 options to set up our MP3 configuration. Another cool feature is that we can now right click on any output or send in either the mix window or the edit window if we have it configured to show those and directly bounce from that. It will automatically open up a bounce dialog with that output selected, which is really kind of cool. Finally, we've got a few additions to the bounce to QuickTime feature here. So if I open up the bounce to QuickTime, a couple of things to note here. First off, if I have multiple bounce sources selected when I do a QuickTime bounce, rather than outputting multiple movie files, those will all be added as additional tracks in my QuickTime movie, because QuickTime can support, of course, multiple audio tracks. Uh, I also now have the ability to select MP3 as my audio format, so it will compress the audio as it goes into my QuickTime bounce. For this final bit of my tutorial, I've added a video track. It's empty right now, but for the purposes of the tutorial, it doesn't really matter. Uh, because there's a video track, I do have the include video option here. If I deselect the same as source, that enables me to see the QuickTime settings dialog here. And I'm able to click that and bring that up. And one of the options you have here, I'm not able to see it right now, but uh, if I had a non-QuickTime compatible source, such as something coming from another video program, maybe it's in a, a DNX HD protocol, uh, Pro Tools now supports any video protocol on the timeline that is also supported in the Avid engine. So 
But what I can do is select that allow transcoding and it will let me transcode that to a quick time as I bounce it out, which is uh, definitely a new feature. Uh, so I can output a QuickTime file from an alternative codec and file format. Hopefully this little tour of Avid's new bounce options has helped. You can always check us out at www.ipr.edu or on YouTube at youtube.com slash IPR Media Arts.